This pin depicts the Mulligan clan's Gaelic family crest. This pin was originally owned by my great-grandfather, Patrick Mulligan, who came to the United States from Ireland in the early 1900s, slightly after the potato famine, which was the more common time for Irish to migrate to America. Instead, he left while Ireland was still struggling with poverty and with disputes between Protestants and Catholics, the latter of which was the religion practiced by my family. He married Delia Agnes McHale and had two children, Alice, my great-aunt, and Edward, my grandfather, both born in the early 1920s, and both children were born in America. They lived in Bridgeport, Connecticut, and suffered from common hardships faced by Irish immigrants, such as struggling with poverty. Patrick worked as a seasonal construction worker for much of his life, but was able to send both his children to college. My, gra my grandfather represents the evolving image of Irish immigrants in America. He graduated from Sacred Heart University and joined the United States Army during World War II, where he earned the rank of Lieutenant Colonel while on duty in the Pacific. He married my grandmother, Margaret Thaler, shortly thereafter, and they had five children, Eileen, Margaret, Catherine, Christine, Edward Jr., and my father, Joseph. One important tradition in the Mulligan family was my grandmother Margaret's chocolate cake. It was my favorite dessert that she prepared. At first, she would only make it for Christmas and Easter, but once she discovered how much I loved it, she would bake it every time she knew I was coming over, especially for my birthday. Sometimes it would be round and sometimes rectangular, but always with vanilla frosting, double-layered, and absolutely delicious. There was a great mystery surrounding the recipe of the cake. My grandma was very proud of her delicious dessert, and she refused to tell anyone how to make it. With her dry and sarcastic sense of humor, she swore that she would take the recipe to her grave. She stuck to her promise, and when she did pass away in 2003, we realized that she had never revealed her recipe to anyone. While sorting through her things, my Aunt Kathy finally located the cherished recipe, and with it we discovered that my hilarious grandmother had played a final joke on her family. The recipe that she used to make her unique cake was found on the back of boxes of Domino's confectionery sugar. Her recipe had been for years consistently in the cupboards in the homes of millions of Americans, including our own, right under our noses. Although we found that the recipe was slightly less rare than we had always imagined, we loved to think of Grandma chuckling to herself every time she prepared the cake, knowing she was playfully fooling us. And that makes her recipe very unique indeed.